Landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess. And one time I saw a cat, but I think it might have been a cleverly disguised fish. Anyhow, um, I figured today we'd take a look at my favorite impractical pocket knives. Um, you know, I've got a few pocket swords, but there's a couple of them that just stand head and shoulders above the rest. And uh, we're probably going to go here with the one that I've owned the longest, and that is the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. Those of you that have been around for a minute have seen it a bunch of times, you know, and it's kind of falls into pocket sword slash pocket slab territory and uh, what you got here is a tip up pocket clip you've got g10 on the handles you got a flipper tab let's flick the bean eh, big bean flick and the steel is 154 cm now this thing i've carried a lot um and i've enjoyed carrying it i especially love whipping it out for shock value at work you know whipping it out's always fun boys and girls but you know this this has uh, definitely treated me pretty well, and with that being said, this also suffers from the Kaiser factory edge. Uh, Kaiser just doesn't do the best factory edges. I'm not sure why they could, but like you compare it to Cold Steel or Artisan, and the difference is staggering. Uh, let's see what I can do to copy paper with this guy. You know, it's still a decent cut, but it's also a louder cut. The edges are a little more ragged and uneven. You know, it's not the sharpest. Cutting uh, saran wrap off of pallets. You know, this thing doesn't do great at that. Um, so at some point, I need to sharpen this, and I'll sit down with the uh, work sharp precision adjust and give it a really good fine edge, just because I think this thing deserves it. And uh, this has been one of my favorites for a long time. You know, big old pocket slabs, just a lot of fun. Now, she's got some gravity to her, so wherever you're putting her, she's going to pull on that side of your waistband. Uh, so, that's something to be uh, prepared for. That's just the cost of admission. But, the Kaiser Sheepdog XL, one of my favorites, and this is one of the old ones. I think they have newer versions with uh, better materials and stuff like that, but this one treats me so good. And, uh, does it guillotine? Yeah, it guillotines shut. So, uh, that's the first one. Um, the next one we're going to take care of, or take a look at is Next in Line. That's the CRKT Ritual. And, of course, you've got fake ivory. You've got anodized blue bolsters. Your pocket clip is tip-up, which is the Lord's Carry. you got a flipper tab and a thumb stud. And let's flick the bean on this. Eh, pretty snappy assisted opener. And I got this because I saw it and it's like, you know what? That is my style of thing. I have to have it. And I bought it for myself as a reward for getting a small promotion at work. I've carried this a few times. And when I say impractical, I do mean impractical by every metric. You know, like trying to cut with it. Um, the only thing you can really do is drag the belly across something. Trying to control the tip while I'm cutting plastic off of the uh, pallet wrap. Yeah, no. It is so hard to get this at the right distance to cut without cutting into the boxes and cutting into product. So this one doesn't get carried a lot. It's more of a show piece than a work piece. But let's check out the factory edge. It hasn't done really any work. You see how much better that was than the Kaiser factory edge? And like this thing has only seen cutting plastic and, you know, cutting paper basically. I haven't fed it a lot of cardboard. I haven't really done that much with it. It's just Kaiser's edges aren't that great. You know, they're not like, they're not like this. So this is one that I enjoy looking at. I enjoy fidgeting with, but yeah, it's way too impractical to actually carry. And to me, that is kind of funny. Now, what I saw is they just released a, uh, a ritual compact. There's the words I was looking for. Sorry, I woke up feeling like teetotal hell, so uh, I'm trying to power through this just because I want to do something to entertain myself and pass some time. But I took a look at the compact. The uh, bolsters and the scales are a different material. It's more of a brown color, which still looks really good on it, and I'd love to be able to get one, but they're like $94, so that's not going to happen for me anytime immediately. But uh, we're going to move on to the next one in order of buying them, and that is my Cold Steel Frenzy. I absolutely love this thing, and what you're getting here is a pocket clip. It's tip-up, which is the Lord's Carry. You've got a thumb stud. You've got like a 5-inch blade. I mean, look at that. Um, it is an absolute monster. And you've got a thumb stud, and you got a lockback. Now, one thing I discovered um, while I was messing with it is you can do a flick off of this fuller right here which makes it a lot more convenient to use. The lockback, I, I don't like having to use two hands to close it, but this is a cold steel pocket sword, so I'm willing to make the exception. You know, especially it's the triad lock, so it's durable enough. It's not the Atlas lock, it's not the shark lock. I, I think that's cold steel, I don't know. 
but uh, you know, it's it's not one of the easier to use ones, but still, it's an incredibly strong lockup, and uh, it's really cool. This thing is incredibly lightweight because the uh, the steel frame, the the liners, all that. Ooh, I just hit my camera. Well, too bad. But all the steel in this kind of ends right about here, and the rest of it is G10. And, you know, I love carrying this thing. It sits so dang comfortably in the waistband. I barely feel it, feel it when it's there, and that is awesome for a pocket sword of this size. And, I mean, I've cut with it. Let's take a look at that cold steel edge. All right. Yeah, cold steel factory edges. They kind of spoiled me. Like, you got this, you got this. They've spoiled me. This was a perfectly fine edge when I first got it, but after hitting stuff like this, stuff like this, the 8010, like the good factory edges, all of a sudden this one doesn't look so good and it needs to be sharpened and profiled more to my taste. But that is a cold steel frenzy, and this is truly a pocket sword. I love pocket swords, and, uh, you know, I'd love to buy the cold steel mayhem, but I ain't got that kind of cash right now. Maybe eventually. I'm currently saving up for Blade Show 2024 and hoping I can find a prototype I can pick up while I'm there. Not too picky about it, just I'd love to get another prototype. Um, but the last one on this list is the Artisan Cutlery Proponent. And I got this not too long ago. I managed to get it for $55 with a, a discount from a $15 uh, gift card that I got from, uh, oh geez, Monacala for uh, my review on the um, Assault Team 1. And, you know, again, full transparency, they sent me that thing. But I had already done the videos on them like weeks earlier. I spent my own money on it. So like that review is from way before that gift card showed up. So that had no influence on that review. But this is another pocket slab. And, uh, you know, you got a beefy, beefy pocket clip here. It's tip up the Lord's carry. You've got um, G10. And let's flick the bean here. Eh, big bean flick. You got a blade that's just shy of four inches, I believe. And uh, this is another one. It just guillotines shut. The action on this is fantastic. And this one carries a little bit more comfortably than the Sheepdog XL. And uh, I'm looking forward to carrying it for the full review. I did a first look at it, but um, the one day I carried it, it was fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed it. And that's the best factory edge in this bunch. This is really, really close, but the factory edge on this one is absolutely nuts. So, uh... That is just my favorite pocket swords and pocket slabs that I own. Like, they are a certain degree of impractical, but they are so much fun to carry. You know, and I always keep an eye out for good pocket swords. And Tim, I do still have that Ned Foss. It's just a clone of something. I can't remember what it is, so it doesn't really get messed with. Now, that being said, I have a friend that's probably going to love it, so I'll pass it on to him. And uh, that was still a good thing to receive and at least do a couple videos on. So, all that being said, thanks for looking at my crap. Subscribers, y'all are still showing up. Uh, we are getting close to eclipsing the uh, other channel that I abandoned, finally. Um, that thing just... I stopped uploading videos to that years ago, and uh, I haven't really gotten back into it. So hopefully sometime soon we hit a 1,000, and uh, I can do a giveaway. I've got, I've got the giveaway knife somewhere around here, and uh, I'll unveil that whenever, uh, whenever the time comes for it. But, again, all that being said, thanks for looking at my crap. Subscribers, you're awesome. Comments, I'll have some feedback. Let me know what you think about these guys. All that being said, y'all have a nice day.